Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Mitten. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Episode 4 of The Mitten on Mitten. There's 162 days left till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. For loose threads this week, um, I finally narrowed down what I think a scarf should be. Um, you know, last week we were able to determine that it's a rectangle, um, but after looking through several patterns on Ravelry, I've decided that my scarf is going to be 7 inches by 54 inches rectangular. And uh, so that, for me, was like a major thing because it was really holding up the whole process of what I was going to do with selecting a pattern. But 7 inches by 54 inches, is it's a nice scarf length. It's a good width. Um, I really don't care for narrow scarves that don't do anything other than, you know, just kind of look pretty around your neck um, for the winter because it's it's pointless. It's it's really cold here um, in the winter, especially when it gets into the end of January, beginning of February, and uh, I just want something that's going to keep me warm. And yes, this is primarily a piece for Rhinebeck, but um, I'm going to be wearing it. So, um, that's what's most important, that it keep me warm. Alrighty. Oh, and before I forget, I did get a quick tutorial from um, one of my friends at NPR. Uh, and uh, hopefully the little trick he showed me today will help me get the... Um, voice track to uh, come up in volume so it's easier to uh, listen to the podcast. Um, and uh, so I'm working on it, I'm learning, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Fitting for the mitten this week? Well, we're still having those, uh, you know, 40 degree fluctuations between where I live and where I work. Plus it's been, you know, it's spring. It's hot, it's cold, it's hot, it's cold. So I thought that the Jared Flood scarf was out of circulation for a scarf for keeping me warm. Uh, and I had the line break, but I learned very quickly <laughs> this week that the Jared Flood scarf is still handy as, as a scarf, not just the pillow. Um, so that was back on me this week. And then, um, really happily, I have my pretty little tulip colored socks that are uh, fresh out of their spa bath have made it into sock circulation and oh my goodness this Lorna Lace's um, merino sock uh, wool is so soft and you know of course the pinks and yellows and greens make me really happy but but the softness of it on my on my feet is it just makes me happy when I take a step. Um, so that's what's fitting for the mitten this week. What have I been knitting? Um, well, I started the week knitting the um, those socks, those socks with the heels that I keep ripping out and uh, just knitting around and around and around. But I decided that they were kind of driving me crazy um, <laughs> because no matter how how many steps forward I I took, uh, I'd take three times as many backwards. Uh, so I did decide to go ahead and start my Ravelry competition piece. Um, so after, I hope you're sitting down, after 25 attempts at starting uh, the piece. Uh, on the 25th attempt, I finally uh, found a pattern that worked with the yarn. Every The pattern that I really liked 
the yarn really didn't like. Um, and it just wasn't draping properly. It wasn't s sitting properly on the needles. It, the There was too much laddering going on just between knit and purl stitches. It just, it wasn't really, it, the pattern didn't match what the yarn wanted to do. And um, so then I tried, you know, several variations of that. I was doing cable patterns, and, and this yarn just does not want to do cable patterns. Um, no matter how small the needle gauge is, it, it just uh, rejected them all. So I finally <laughs> gave up my stubbornness and decided to actually listen to what the yarn wanted to do. And um, so I'm doing a nice, just really sim simplistic um, uh, diagonal pattern, diagonal ribbed pattern with a with a um, with a little border going around it, and and I think it'll be really pretty um, when it's done. And and the yarn likes it, you know, it it it's making it look good. Um, it's not pulling in a lot. It's maintaining a rectangular shape. Uh, so I, I think that this is, this is going to be the pattern. Uh, the thing that made me really happiest, though, was the way that my hand spun held up to being cast on and ripped out uh, 24 times, and cast on 25 times. The yarn held. Uh, the single stayed single. It didn't felt up. It didn't it didn't tear or or just you know fall apart in my hands it it really held up well and I'm very very pleased about that um, so that's what I'm knitting on the wheel this week um, well it was a it was a uh, get it done kind of week I finished spinning up the um, gradient sock uh, spin uh, I have two skeins. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of okay with one, which was uh, 154 yards. Um, the other skein came out at 110, and it's, it's a little thick. I could do um, ankle socks out of either one, and and be pleased as punch with them. But what I think I'm going to do, um, as uh, my friend Kath suggested, is take the other half of the gradient roving that I still have and split that up and do another gradient spin and, and you know try one more time to aim for the sock weight and to get them both more of a equal length of yarn out of uh, out of the, the next spin of the, the gradient roving. Um, it's good practice, and, and I think it makes perfect sense. I was going to make a, a cowl and a pair of uh, fingerless mitts out of the other half of the gradient uh, roving, so I have plenty um, with the 154 yards and the, um, and, the, and, the, and the thicker to do a cowl and a pair of finger, fingerless mitts, so either way I'll, I'll get the objects finished objects out of the roving that I want to get out of the roving. Um, so it'll all work out in the end and I'll get some extra practice um, spinning for sock yarn. So that's good. Um, finished up uh, more skeins of merino. And, and those are uh, spying. Uh, they've, been, they've been washed and uh, weighted and are drying. And then I finished up the Hip strings Gerber Daisy um, bats, which are, which came out really nice. Um, I, you know, I I did it as just a, a not thoughtful, intentional spin, just just having fun spinning. So it's you know my my bulky yarn uh, that's kind of thick and thin in spots. Is as as someone put it, it's. It's an art bat. I was like, right, yeah, I, I, I meant to do that. No, I've, I just had fun spinning it, and it looks really pretty. I, I'm going to make a pillow cover out of it, and I'll do a, um, 
I'll do like the, the center of the hap, I'll do a diagonal square and garter stitch, um, where you start with one stitch and then you uh, add two stitches, one on either side, every every row until you um, use up 50% of the weight of the yarn and then go back down. Actually, I should probably not go by weight, I should probably go by length, considering that it's um, thick and thin, that'll probably give me more consistent results. Um, so that bobbin's empty, and then uh, I just have more merino to spin up, but uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get to that um, soon enough. Uh, what's finished this week? Well, no finished objects, just, just the finished um, skeins. The two skeins of gradient, the skein of the hip strings, Gerber Daisy, and uh, the skeins of Merino. So that's all that's finished. Um, nothing else, and I don't foresee anything else being finished soon unless I go ahead and stop um, knitting on the Rhinebeck scarf and switch over to switch over to the hip strings pillowcase. Um, so that's a possibility. Mm, maybe not, though. Maybe I'll just focus on the Rhinebeck scarf and see if I can uh, get a significant amount of work done on that. Because I still have to do the spindle um, spun 40 yards for the hip strings, and that's going to take some time. And now a word not from a sponsor. The Homestead Hobbyist, making hand-dyed fiber for your spinning pleasure. Visit The Homestead Hobbyist on Etsy.com to see the latest in his Savage Blend line. And don't forget to stop by and see him in person at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, May 7th through 8th at the Howard County Fairgrounds in Maryland. Homestead Hobbyist, your source for fluffy balls. Of roving, that is. In stash up down this week, well, down is half of the um, half of the roving for the gradient, and the hip strings bat is down. Uh, moved them over. I moved them over into the um, hand spun yarn category out of the fiber category, so that's good. Uh, but you know, I went down to so <clears throat> yeah, I went up to also. I got a. Uh, a braid of Inglenook. Um, it's 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 white um, fiber with shots of ice blue going through it. It's so very very pretty. Actually, it's really more more the blue than than the white base. But that is going to be a stunning something. There's four ounces of it, and depending upon how it spins, if it wants to be thick or thin. Um, if it wants to be thin, I might be able to eke out maybe a a short sleeve sweater or something. Who knows? But it's really pretty, and I really love it a lot. And I also got a box of Jacob fleece um, from a friend of mine in Texas uh, who ended up with more Jacob than she wanted. Uh, so I was happy to uh, help her uh, get rid of some of that. You know, I did it just for her, of course. Um, so, but uh, it's, it's you know, it's a tricolor Jacob fleece. So it's got the, the cream, the light brown, and the, and the chocolate brown in it. And it's really pretty. Of course, um, Mr. Mitten had to come in and <laughs> find out what was in the box. So he opened up the box, and I said, no, don't touch it, and he dug his hand right in there. Um, and then I had to explain to him that that is a raw fleece. It has not been washed. And I made him go and wash his hands very thoroughly um, with antiseptic soap uh, to uh, get them clean again because one does not handle raw fleece without wearing gloves. Well, at least not in my house you don't because you never know what, was on the fleece, and um, just like when you go into someone's farm, if they say you can go ahead and, you know, 
pet their livestock, you wash your hands first so you don't give anything that was on your hands to the livestock. It's just a basic ag common sense, I guess. Where I won't be is actually where I wasn't. Uh, I was hoping to head over to the Connecticut um, Fiber Festival, which took place yesterday. Uh, but unfortunately, when everything in the day was said and done, I did not finish up until after the festival ended. And, and it is uh, about an hour and a half away from me, maybe two hours. Um, so it would have been a lovely day for a drive, uh, but I did not end up going. I understand it was a really wonderful festival and everybody had tons and tons of fun, but um, that's where I wasn't this week. So maybe I can figure out where I won't be next week um, someplace. Well, I won't be going to Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, that's for sure. Oh dear. But I'm hoping that a lot of my friends who are going will take wonderful pictures, hint, hint, um, and post them up on Ravelry boards so uh, I can enjoy their trip. This week on Grabby Paws, um, with all my looking through patterns for a scarf for the Rhinebeck competition piece, I uh, kind of drifted off into the lace shawls. And so I have been looking at all sorts of very, very intricate lace shawls and the yarns that go with them that are so fine and so soft. And some of them are cobweb lace, um, which is, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these, these must have taken, I, I, I think when I see them, it must have taken like 12 years to knit this, and then, then you see in the, the project notes, you know, oh, it took me like three weeks to knit this 24-foot long um, shawl uh, out of lace that I needed 17 pairs of glasses on my face in order to be able to see. I'm just, I am amazed by the high quality of work that so many people on Ravelry are willing to share with the group. It's just amazing in it. And it just makes me want to start a shawl, even if it takes me, you know, 20 years to finish, or if I never do. Just just for the the challenge of the intricacy of it. And if it ever does finish, and I actually block it, um, the beauty of the finished pieces, because there are some gorgeous patterns um, from older patterns to even some of the newer designers. It's just fantastic. Um, so that's what's uh, piquing my interest in grabby paws this week. For dough this week, um, if you didn't catch it when I was talking about my lovely tu tulip socks and, and the socks that are still in my bag, uh, I ripped out those heels and ripped them out again. So the next time I go and knit the heels on, on the socks that are still on my needles, that'll be number seven and eight. Also, um, because that yarn was not behaving, I did take out the um, eye of partridge uh, going across uh, the sole of the foot. Um, the yarn didn't like it, and... I wasn't happy with the way that it was uh, being shaped, even though, you know, it seemed to fit okay. I just felt that I wouldn't be happy with it long term, and if I'm not happy with it, then it's it's got to go because I'm spending, I spend too much time and too much money on these for me not to be happy with the end product. Um, and And the point of all the fiber arts that I do isn't for anyone else but me to be pleased with the results or that's what I want to get out of it. I, I, I want to enjoy them. Um, so, and I wasn't. So, I ripped them out. And there you have it. 
also the um <clears throat> the other big doe was the uh the Rhinebeck scarf competition piece. I mean, really 25 cast-ons for a scarf. We're talking 44 to 58 stitches. Um that's just that's just silliness. So maybe I should have learned to pay a little more attention, not just to the wraps per inch, but the plies of the yarn. The reasons the patterns that I picked out for the the first permutations of the scarf didn't work was because I'm working with a two-ply yarn, not a three-ply, not a round yarn. I'm working with a flat yarn. And when you work with a round yarn, you're going to be able to get the pop in the cables um, you know, or stitch definition. Whereas when you're working with a flat yarn, that really isn't the case. Um, also, with my merino, it's not as stretchy as like a commercial merino because it's only two ply. So any really intricate lace pattern isn't going to show up really well with my merino. It's it's going to look stringy instead of lacy even after it's blocked. So um, I need to pay more attention to just what the yarn is and that'll tell me what the yarn wants to do. And um, in case you hadn't noticed, uh, there was also a dough for the recording that went out for episode three. Um, that noise, by the way, is, is Harley. She wants, I think she probably just wants a treat or, or a little more love. My girls, they always want extra love. Um, but anyway, in episode three, I managed to put part of episode two into the audio track. So my apologies for that. Uh, I have learned uh, a little bit more on how to do the audio editing, and hopefully um, it'll go smoother as, as, as we progress on our road to Rhinebeck. Where I'll be, uh, once again, uh, next weekend I don't have anything planned as to where I'll be. Hopefully I'll be home and out in the garden getting some gardening done and uh, during the lovely working hours. And then if it's too hot or too cold, I'll be inside uh, playing with my spinning wheel or my knitting. Um, but nothing planned as far as um, talking or visiting or anything like that. Um, which, by the way, is, you know, really f far and far in between, so uh, I wouldn't be looking for me anywhere anytime soon. But if you are, you know, let me know, and <laughs> we'll figure something out. All right. In questions for the mitten this week, um, we did receive a question from Kath. Um, and Kath, I'm really sorry to hear the news of your needle. That is so stunningly depressing to have a needle break, especially when you're in the, the cast-on rows or the first couple rows, especially when you're in magic loop, and most especially when you're just learning how to do a new technique. Um, so many hugs go out to you, although if it makes you feel better, as I mentioned on the boards, um, the same thing happened to me when I was learning. I didn't break the needle, but I did lose the stitches, and it was uh, a mess just trying to get everything um, back together, and I I still bear the scars of, of the pain of it, um, so much so that when I'm casting on for Magic Loop, whether it's um, fingers down or up or cuff down or up, whichever way your hand is pointing, um, you indicate that you're holding your hand up as if for stopping traffic, so and you're doing cuff up because that's the way your hand is. So, um, whichever way it is, I cast on on the two needles, um, and then I set the needles onto a stitch holder, 
and then I cast on the second um, piece and then I take the needles from the stitch holder and I'm oh and I knit a row after I cast on so it's cast on knit a row put them on a stitch holder cast on knit a row and then I take the knitting from the stitch holder and I put it back into magic loop um, making sure that everything is exactly how it should be. It's not a sleek, elegant, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm a pro at magic loop method, but it makes sure that my stitches are sitting properly on the needle and are properly secured without being twisted or anything, and it, I, it's just easier for me to do it that way, and sometimes easy is what you want with me and mittens, uh, sometimes easy is best. It's, it's one of the reasons I like mittens is because they're short and and they can be simple. They can be incredibly complex, but they can be simple. And they're just um, they're little little M and M's of happiness from my fingers. So I hope this answers your question, and I hope that uh, your mittens are successful. Congratulations on trying out Magic Loop, too. I can't wait to see your pictures. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye!